Hi, this couch is broken. <laughs> My bad. Hi, I'm Logan Styler with Never Ready Gamers. And I'm James McCarthy with Never Ready Gamers. And if you didn't know, we're big fans of the Game of Thrones. Right there. And uh, we take every opportunity to game as much a Game of Thrones as we possibly can game. And the best way to do that right now is with a Game of Thrones, the card game, the second edition, produced by Fantasy Flight Games, and generally enjoyed by anyone who has taste. Today you are going to see a play-by-play -play of a game that two of our friends, Brady Davis and Eddie Camper, played over in the dungeon room at McNard Gaming in Goshen, Mississippi. Eddie's going to be playing um, the Martells with the Banner of the Kings of Summer, I believe. The Banner of the Kings of Summer. The Banner of the Kings of Summer, also yes. known as the Kings of Summer. There, there you uh, versus Greyjoy Kings of Summer, played by our friend Brady Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, the team that goes first versus the team that goes last. Yes. Who will win? Your answer doesn't matter. That, that's fair. Let's go to the video. Let's, let's put that away. <laughs> All right, Jay, you ready? And so it begins. That's a Babylon 5 reference. Uh, right now we're going to have uh, both of our players uh, dealing out their initial seven card hands. Uh, from that they're going to go into setup. Uh, each of them have an allowance of eight gold, uh, which is the uh, currency to play cards in the game. They will use that to marshal, uh, marshal to set up, excuse me, um, their starting characters, locations, and attachments. Uh, for those keeping score at home, or even if you're alone, you have on the overhead you're going to have Eddie Camper on your left playing uh, Martell, Banner of, excuse me, not Banner of, but uh, Kings of Summer. Uh, on the right, you're going to have Brady Davis also playing Kings of Summer, but playing a Greyjoy version of it. Uh, you're also going to have uh, some side shots that we intersperse every now and again. Uh, in that case, Brady will be on the left and Eddie will be on the right. Eddie has already, have, already has his setup down. It's going to be three cards. Again, they can total up to eight. He may have gone a little bit lower, but we shall see. Brady, I think, is finishing up now. He has four cards on setup. Or does he? Does he? Yeah. Does he? Waiting? Yes. Yes, it will be a four-card setup. Um, by the way, Logan is here. Thank you for showing back up. Yay. All right, there you go. All right. Uh, on uh, Eddie's side of the board, he has Ariane Martell. He has Edric Dane, and he has a King's Road. On uh, Brady's side of the board, he has a Housemaster, a uh, Salty Navigator, and a Lord's Ports Fisherman, also with a King's Road in his location line. They have drawn back up to seven, and they are now in the process of picking plots for the first proper turn of the game. I like Eddie's setup. Except, I think the only thing that really makes Eddie's setup here really worthwhile, in my opinion, is the King's Road. Um, he might have a mediocre hand, which is something you should always keep. Never, never risk a mediocre hand for a good hand, because you'll probably get a really bad hand. Possible. Uh, we're going to first plots, and there they are. Uh, I know that the uh, visuals are a little tight here, and we do sorry for that. We will improve in the future. But uh, Brady has played a noble cause. Five gold, uh, zero initiative, one claim. Uh, the first lord or lady he plays this turn is going to cost him two less gold. On Eddie's side, he played time of plenty. Six gold, one initiative, one claim. He increases the amount of cards everyone draws by one for doing that. So they're each going to draw three cards during the draw phase. This flip-off here is to determine who gets first player because both of them have a starting initiative value of two. And uh, having one initiative or having been given initiative by Eddie, Eddie provides Brady with a square of wine. <laughs> that will never come into play for the remainder of this game. No. Cards drawn, and now we're going into the first set of marshalling. And I think Eddie had Brady go first. Uh, Brady is going first, uh, so he will be marshalling first. Strange choice. Um, one thing, and I, this will be mentioned later on in this, uh, Rose Road comes down for uh, Brady, is that you have this kind of unique matchup in that the deck that always wants to go first, Greyjoys, is facing the deck that doesn't want to go first, or in this case always wants to go last, which is going to be Martell's. Which advantage? I would say it's always a better advantage for Greyjoys to go first, but I believe Eddie's confident there. And the first big play of the game is going to be Vicky Greyjoy, otherwise known as Victorian Greyjoy. 
Uh, he's one of the newer uh, Greyjoys. This one coming, I believe, from the uh, Lions of Casterly Rock expansion. It's going to be six gold uh, for a military and power icon, five strength. He has keywords intimidate and renown. And as an interrupt, if Vectorian Greyjoy would be killed, if he has two power on him, you can discard two power from him to save him. So he is exceptionally unkillable. It's 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 kind of scary. Uh, he's also Ironborn, so he can be the target of Risen from the Sea. Uh, another thing that has just gone down for Brady is going to be the Sea Stone Chair. That's a location, a unique uh, one gold. Uh, if he wins an unopposed military challenge in lieu of regular claim, he can kneel his faction card and target a non-attached character and just outright slaughter it. Deadly, deadly, deadly. And the final play, I believe, in his marshalling is going to be the Wildling Bandit. Uh, two gold, military, and intrigue, one strength. Uh, when Wildling Bandit is attacking an, uh, an opponent with more gold in his or her gold pool, he gets plus two strength. So very good for being aggressive. Fits in very well with kind of the Greyjoy motif here. And the Seastone Chair gets around things like zero plot claim, right? That is something that comes up or would have come up. Uh, spoiler alert, something bad happened on the way to the forum on that one. Mm. All right. Brady has finished his marshalling, and we're going to go to Eddie's marshalling. Uh, I, you like his board for King's Road, and I would, I would agree for that. But for me, the versatility of having Ariane out. Uh, classic Ariane, five gold intrigue and power as an action you can place a character of five or less costs uh, from your hand into play and then return Ariane to your hand uh, we have a bastard daughter coming out into play for two gold uh, also a king's road also i mean not a king's road but a rose road went out for uh eddie in this turn as well so both economies are humming very well especially them being summer decks uh, you're not going to see any winter cards so you're going to be getting plus one gold a lot of the turns Eddie's continuing to think. I'm trying to remember if he played anything else here, and I don't believe he did. I'm a liar, uh, but you have found that out now, so that's pretty good. Uh, he's sacking his King's Road to uh, make... Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, he's, he's correct. He's sacked the uh, King's Road to put out the Knights of the Sun. Okay. Um, and so he saved himself three gold there. Um, he went to Brady and asked him if that's okay, and he's cool with that. Final play of the round, I believe, is going to be an Imprisoned on Victorian Greyjoy. Imprisoned removes a military icon from a character, meaning that Vicky only has power on him at this moment. We're seeing a peek at Brady's hand. If you can see what he's got there, you have better eyes than I do. So congratulations on that. I think he's staring Balan down the eye it looks like it like he's thinking about okay I'm going to definitely play him next turn but he gets locked up in a little loop of what am I going to do this turn now that my challenges phase is triggered off and we are in challenges right now now I do like Brady's setup for long term gold yes. um, he's got reducer he's got and we have a um, for those <laughs> of you keeping score at home again uh, we just had an earthquake, and it almost killed both of our players. However, they are superheroes, so they were able to deflect that quite nicely. <laughs> Being there live, uh, you can tell that we're very quiet right now. They were also extremely quiet with this one as well. Like They were like in deep, deep thought. And it's kind of intense when you have two people in... Brady and Eddie across not just this game but multiple games and just in life in general just have been competing a lot. So whenever the two of them kind of get together, they're trying to not tip off um, old habits. I think we're about to have, yes, our first challenge goes off and it looks like it is a military for two. Salty Navigators, that is their only icon, uh, military icon. However, they also provide plus one initiative. Uh, again, if you're a uh, if you're a Greyjoy player and you want to go first and you want to make sure you're dictating that tempo, Salty Navigators are really good. They come in on the gold curve extremely well, and uh, I, I dig them. 
He's Ironborn too, is he? I believe he is Ironborn. Okay. That gives him access to a lot of pluses and saves. Mm -hmm. All right. Defense, I believe, with Knights of the Sun for four. Mm -hmm. uh, Knights of the Sun um, are very are much better later uh, game or uh, I say later game, but what I really should want to say here is later plot phase later in the plot phases after more plots have been played because after there are three used plot cards in your pile they will gain renown which at four strength on your military and your power challenges that's pretty impressive oh yeah arianne comes down for a a block of victorian uh, he will win by one triggers intimidate and kneels edric dane and also gets a power for his renown Finally, I think the House Maester is going in for an Intrigue challenge, and with no Intrigue to be had, uh, this should go unopposed. No, no, it's not going to go unopposed, because look who's out there. Oh, yeah. Arian's, Arian's, Arian's waiting. Arian's waiting to jump right back into hand. It's so helpful to be able to effectively use one card for two blocks. Mm-hmm. And for two attacks, because she can swing on a uh, intrigue or a power. Mm -hmm. um, he has placed the sun itself to block <laughs> to block whatever has gone on here. It didn't work, um, and we'll fi figure out what exactly he played there. And oh no, Ariane, you poor poor girl. Oh yeah. This was this was a bad moment for Eddie because that's a bad one of your bad tempo breaks that you could possibly have is losing her after making that play. Uh, I think that ended up being a House Dane Knight. Um, two strength, uh, two cost, military intrigue, uh, nothing else special other than being House Dane. Yeah. Losing losing Arianne from an intrigue challenge is really rough. Mm -hmm. I believe that ends it for the challenges phase for Brady in this first turn. We're now going over to Eddie who has one character standing uh, and effectively only one challenge out of that uh, being uh, the Bastard Daughter's military challenge. I'm throwing here, and I think he's pointing right now at the Wilding Bandit to figure out what its strength is right now. Um, I think they're going over the fact that it's only a strength one right now. So Ty is going to the attacker so long as the Ty is at more than zero. Bastard Daughter's swinging. Bandit is blocking, but that's not going to be enough. And Claim is going to go to the victor. What will be claimed? And this play I don't like, um, especially with some of the big things that are still in Brady's deck and in Brady's hand right now. Because I, mm -hmm. I do believe Balan's in there, and you want to be able to pay for him. And with Summer Plot cards, you, you would have the money for that. Re the Reducer helps there. I may, in my opinion, out of lost, out of gone lose the either the bandit or out of lost the uh, out of lost the house maester. Looking at the board, military wise, I probably would have killed the maester because I want to keep I want to keep my icons as red as what is matching up against me. Right, because Brady's already used Rose Road, King's Road. Okay, remember Rose Road is the plus one golder. Okay, there you go. They both have Rose Roads, I think. You might see another Rose Road come down for Brady in this turn as well. Plot phase. Meticulous selection of plots. Things happening for no reason. And this is where we told them to please adjust where they were putting their plots so that we could see them a little better. Yeah. Even though the, once again, you can tell with uh, Eddie he is truly a knight of the sun because it just shines off of him and all of his cards and has nothing to do with the fact that our lighting didn't come in until the day after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and kaboom. And then, okay, on this side we have confiscation for Brady. Uh I think I know exactly what's coming off here. It's the only thing that can come off, which will be the Condemned off of Victorian Greyjoy. Oh, yeah. Freeing up his icons. Um, I think that is going to be Summer f uh, summer Harvest. Yeah, it will be Summer Harvest for, uh, for Eddie. X Gold, where X is the value of an opponent's plot card 
plus two. So you're going to be getting the gold advantage almost all the time with this. Uh, very good play here, especially when he wants to throw out a lot of stuff. He's got a Rose Road down there as well, so that's going to be another plus one. Uh, he's got a Summer Plot card in play, so that's another plus one. And the pennies are just falling out of his hand. He can't even hold them. Like it, it's so many pennies. So many pennies. But I do believe here Brady will be going first again, as he elected to go first. And yes, he did take uh, the uh, Imprisoned. I think it is the Imprisoned off of, uh, on, off of Vicky, freeing him up to do what he does best. I believe we're tied at one for one power right now. Yeah, one uh, one on uh, one on the house card for uh, Eddie and one on Vicky for Brady. And yes, those are the exact same cards you still have, gentlemen. Yep, there's the second Rose Road. <laughs> uh, Brady Brady now no longer cares about money because he has all that he needs. I think that's probably yeah. why he got rid of the reducer. Mm -hmm. Iron Mines comes down. More save uh, for the Blue Boys. I believe that's Rattle Shirts Raiders coming in. Rattle Shirts are going to see a lot of play uh, on both sides of this. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, so if you're a big fan of Rattle Shirt and his boys, you will enjoy this video. Oh, I have been. Yeah. I love Rattle Shorts Raider. Rattle Shorts Raider? Well, yes. Rattle Shorts. Rattle Shorts. <laughs> If your uh, shorts I, are rattling, I think he's a unique rattle shirt. You have problems. He doesn't wear shorts. That must be in like, which is odd. That must be like in the expanded universe, mm. otherwise known as the book series. <laughs> there you go. Or the dirty diaries that George R. R. Martin keeps for all the characters mm. he likes to kill. I think that is yet another King's Road, as uh, the marshalling on Eddie's side begins. Um, I believe. Strawberry Jam Eyes is about to come out. Strawberry Jam... Oh. No. Fortunately, the mountain isn't here <clears throat> to make Strawberry Jam out of his eyes. You gotta love every time the mountain ends up killing... The Red the Viper, Viper, which you now see, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, still an imposing figure on the board. Seven cost, seven strength. Tricon, uh, if you win a challenge as the attacker... If you win by, I believe, what is it, five or more for each five or more you win by, that's another power on top of him. Yep. Yeah. He keep he, getting pu get punched, get punched, get punched, get later in the game, later in the game, build up, build up, build up, make that one giant swing, and you can pull off three, maybe even four power onto him just in his one attack. If there ever was a cartoon snowball, it is him. Yes. And it's usually why he gets milk murdered and everything else along the way. Yeah. Deservedly so. Yeah, I've got Gregor Clegane on speed dial for shit, just like I said. A, I said a naughty. We're well, gonna we're gonna bleep that out with a funny word, and everything's gonna be fine. You won't even know which naughty I said. And Logan goes silent. A little bit. I believe. I mean, I'm just amazed at your self control at this point. Yeah, I know. And now. To me, uh, one of the MVPs of this match, uh, the Green Blood comes out. Uh, the Green Blood gives all Martell characters on your side of the board, if you've got it, plus one strength for every summer plot card in play. Bear in mind, both of these gentlemen are playing Kings of Summer. So there are going to be rounds where Eddie has two strength on all of his Citrus characters because of that. I like to call Martel Citrus. I've noticed. Yeah. Now, the, Eddie's setup kind of just makes Game of Thrones, which is already math heavy, more math conscious. Extrapolate. Okay, so we we all sit there and play the numbers game and what's and the future numbers games. Now you have to constantly account for the plots, which always change. So you have to be ever conscious of changing numbers, con like the entire game. Fair enough. Okay. So you're looking at the the power for X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, X, Y, and Z being the tr the icons, and then you just have ever changing numbers. Mm -hmm. And Martell is unique in the math because they allow for a lot of icon denial, which mm -hmm. then changes the math even more so. Because normally you can just play your stuff out and say, okay, this always has this and it's fine. 
Martel says, hold that thought. And any kind of icons that you don't like, uh, you just take them from them mm -hmm. with imprisoned, uh, attainted, and condemned. Oh, they have wonderful icon denial. And of course, uh, everybody's favorite sand snake. And if she's not, I don't know what your problem is. But uh, Nymeria Sand, uh, or as I like to call her, Nai Nai. Which allows you to take any one icon from any person on the board. And then not only does she gain that icon, but all sand snakes gain that icon. So those bastard daughters, uh, which normally are just a strength one military... With green blood out against another summer deck with summer plots in play means they're a strength three and they could potentially have any icon in the game. Mm -hmm. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Brady plotting, finger tapping, getting ready to swing with his first challenge on the on on the day. And by day I mean turn. <laughs> they both have a really strong strong board state right now. Vicky's going in. I believe this will be military for eight. Yes, military for eight because you have five from Vicky and three from Rattle Shirts. Eddie is looking at his hand yet again. He'll make a decision eventually. Brady looking at his hand. Yep, same cards. <laughs> That's one thing I could never get over in mm. in games was the fidget. Like, I've always tried to develop that. I'm just going to set these cards down and never look at them again and just stare at you while you're doing your turn. And I can never get that to work. I just can't do it. Uh, instead, I also do the fidget. But the one fidget I always hate is the one where they just, like, take one card at a time, just keep going flip, 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 flip in the hand and just... Just I don't get it, man. I just don't get it. I think depending on the speed of the game. Yeah. yeah. We got I believe the bastard daughter and the red viper are gonna block here combined. That is strength ten. Mm -hmm. Uh again, actually no, strength <coughs> is it strength twelve at this point? No, it'll be strength ten. It'll be uh strength ten because there's only one summer plot in play. But uh, the Red Viper is at 8, and the uh, the Bastard Daughter is at uh, 2, making for a successful defense of the military challenge. House Maester is coming in at 2. I'm actually surprised Eddie used the Red Viper to block. Agreed. I kind of wonder if the Bastard Daughter isn't sacrificable there to at least pull a card out of his hand. Mm hmm I think he liked just being able to control that. That was going to be a power challenge. Uh, House Maester went in for two and was blocked by five. And now the final intrigue challenge. I believe this intrigue will be for three because at this point, I believe Eddie had more gold mm -hmm. than Brady at this point in the turn. The question here is, do you pay the one to give Edward, uh, Ed Edric any kind of stealth icon to block this or do you send your house day and night to block it and just not not concede a power to him Edric's one of those wall cards that's really nice to have I think he did actually no he blocked for three again it would be three here again I apologize Mentioned the green blood over and over again, and nothing happened. I think, no, I guess that was a victory there. I don't know. I guess I, th I thought he had more gold at that point, so the bandit would have had strength to match, but I guess not. So that was just a wash on the... That was a wash on those ch uh, challenges. I think that was a wash on standing. And so we're going to go to round three, and the plot's dropping here. And Valor hits. And Brady plays Valor. And uh, Song of Summer gets played over on um, Eddie's side of the board. Song of Summer, five gold, three initiative, one claim. Uh, when there are no winner plot cards in play, each character you control gains plus one strength. However, scoop, because Valor Margulis says kill each character. This turn starts out extremely well for Brady, because he's able to sack a dupe, Vicky still stands, 
He's going to sack Iron Mines, and I believe he saves Rattle Shirt, or did he save the Bandit? I think he saved the Bandit. What did you save, Brady? What did you save? Oh, you saved Rattle Shirt, and everything else goes into uh, the garbage can. I think the I think the idea there is with rattle shirts out you have a commanding military presence on the board as opposed to nothing on their side of the board but one of the things and this kind of bites brady uh, spoiler alert in this round for that initial explosion of everything dying your tempo takes a huge huge hit in this turn you have no claim so you are not pulling cards out of hand generally you are not pulling power off of their card oh you're not having a cardboard sign fall upon top of you. Uh, and you're not killing anybody with military. Well, to be fair, with Seastone Sheriff, does get around that. And that is a blessing in almost every other circumstance, except maybe in this turn. Oh. And you're going to find out why. Yeah. Always double check your board state. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out in a second why that's important. Even with only two gold, with two Rose Roads out, that's four, four gold. So that's always great to be able to just have money. Priest of the Drown God comes in play. That's going to be uh, Intrigue and Power. He's two strength, but if it's a Drown God character, and for every Drown God character on the board, each one of those is going to get plus one strength just for having that guy out there. Baptizing him with salt water. Grossness. Salt, kelp, and driftwood beatings. Yep. And Blood Orange Grove comes out for Eddie on his side of the uh, his side of the marshal. Economy was never an issue in this game like mm -hmm. at all. Like, but, but the Rose Roads coming out, it being it being Kings of Summer, it was just amazing. Neil's one uh, to pay, and then pays another one for Gaston Gray. Mm -hmm. Not the MVP of this match but easily one of the two big mistakes that is going to happen in this uh, game happened because of this card. And it's just nasty. It's a tough card to play around. And I will say this. When I look at a Martell... Real quick, you notice Eddie is looking over at Seastone Chair because of the yep. point you just made. And again, always double check your board state. Mm-hmm. This way he knows that if a unopposed military challenge goes in, even though the claim is zero, Seastone Chair can still be used to kill anything he puts out. So he has to be very, very careful with how he plays this turn. It makes the military challenge something to look after. And if he hadn't double-checked that, he could have gotten caught. Oh, yeah. But looking at a lot of, to be honest, the artwork on martell locations they all kind of look the same to me that's fair which again is another reason why to double check the board state like yeah. ask your opponent may i see that card right and even, as always read the card even with Greyjoy, if they just run a lot of ships again the ships just kind of look all the same to me mm -hmm. all right another bastard daughter goes into play i'm going to take this opportunity uh, during this marshalling to also mention something else and a lot of Martell players that are watching this are kind of going, why didn't he do this? Bastard Daughters read, whenever the Red Viper or a Bastard Daughter is killed, you can discard a card at random from another player's hand. Yep. In that Valor, the Red Viper and a Bastard Daughter both died. Mm -hmm. Brady should be sitting on two less cards right now. Oops. It happens. Whenever you have that opportunity, take that opportunity. And now, to me, the MVP of the match, Marcella Baratheon, comes into play. Marcella Baratheon, four gold, intrigue, and power, three strength. When there are no king characters in play, Marcella gains renown and does not kneel when, is de when declared as a defender in power challenges. If you're going second a lot, which is something that you're going to do uh, as Martell, the fact that 
she can defend power challenges without having to kneel, which means she's still available to fire back on power when it comes around to your turn. Mm -hmm. That's entirely great. Entirely great. Priest of Drowned God gets knelt in the first challenge that Brady throws this turn. Um, He hiccuped here. I think this challenge went unopposed. As I don't think he wanted to have Marcella kneel. And there he goes, the unopposed. Yep. We're now at one to one. And he and it's always a great day when your opponent tells you you don't get anything because of your card. Mm-hmm. Terrible thing. And now the first big mistake. Vicky gets knelt. And he's going for the military challenge. Now here was my problem with this, and I just now kind of noticed this. Oh, no, it was, excuse me, it was not a military, it was a power challenge. Excuse me. Um, she blocked it and then sent, uh, and then sent, uh, he sent v- uh, Vicky back to hand with uh, Gaston Gray. So now going from a statistical card advantage to a statistical card disadvantage. Mm-hmm. That was bad, especially Vicky. Like, Vicky was his kind of beat stick here early in the match. He kind of needed him out in play, and losing him, that that put him on the back foot. Mm-hmm. And yes, if you shuffle your hand again, you will see Victorian graduate. Yep, there he is. Put him back together. Knock him around a little bit. Put you him can, there. Vicky's in there. Put him back together. You can tell Brady's nervous now. He's been nervous. Yeah. Since, he's been nervous since he dropped Valor. Mm-hmm. All right, military for, I believe... Three, uh, one for Green Blood, one for Song of Summer. Even if he blocks with Rattle Shirts, uh, the challenge is going to win. He does block with Rattle Shirts, but now he has to kill something. He's thinking about it and goes with the Priest of the Drowned God instead. Mm. And this now leaves the way open. I believe he goes for a power challenge here to take Brady's one and getting two, swinging three power his way. And prior to the power challenge by Victorian Greyjoy, where I believe it was two to one, it is now three to zero. Actually, no, excuse me, four to zero, because Marcella, I forgot you are a renowned character, you gorgeous little girl. And Brady gets dominance. Brady gets dominance thanks to gold, which is not something you're normally going to get on uh, your on your valor turns. Just because, again, the tempo loss, you're not going to be able to put a lot of stuff out. Uh, your m- money uh, is going to be low, and a lot of your stuff probably died. Oh, yeah. I, I know Brady wanted to keep as much of force on the board as he could, but he lost it. Like, he lost it bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you're staring down. Again, you're staring down right now. If you play a summer card right now, Eddie's bastard daughters are at, are at strength three. The best military you can offer right now is three strength. So unless you can play something else that's military, you're losing that military challenge. Gross. Gross. All right. Cards come down. Summer harvest comes down for Brady. So he's going to get a lot of gold. Uh, I believe five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, five for it being close call on the other side, plus two for the Summer Harvest, plus one for Kings of Summer, plus two for Rose Road. I hope you kept count of that. Brady kept count of that in his hand. I don't know if I just lost the count of that. On the flip side of things, Eddie played close call. Uh, it being a summer plot, he's going to get five, six, seven, I think seven for this turn. He's also going to be able to draw a card. But the most important thing about this, he's going to be able to look at his dead pile Pick one of those characters out and move it, not from into play, but into the discard pile. If you're unique characters and there's only one copy of them in the dead pile and you can move one of them out, you have officially freed that character to come back into play if you draw another copy of them later in the round. Huge. Absolutely huge. The huge explosion that got caused last turn, thanks to a mistake, ended up in Eddie's favor. And now the death of probably his most powerful character, maybe not his most important character, 
but his most powerful character has now been negated by the fact that he can now play him again. Asha Greyjoy comes out on the uh, first. And now, a little bit of a math issue here again. He had 10 gold. Balance in hand. So is Asha. Combined, that's 11 gold. He doesn't have enough to put them both out. Tough. So, you're going to have to go with plan B here. Another 5 gold means Littlefinger comes out. But he gets to draw. He gets to draw two cards. He gets to he keeps his options open in his hand. A very thick hand, thanks to the reserve being at plus two for both of them, since they're both playing Kings of Summer. Mm -hmm. Marshalling for Brady ends and immediately begins with Eddie playing a Blood Orange Grove. Eddie kneeling them both for a two buck discount. Another Knight of the Sun comes out. And I believe this is turn four, I believe, at this point. And for those of you who cannot tell from, again, from the wonderful glare from uh, the uh, high atop Sun Spear, that is Sirio Pharrell. Uh, Sirio Pharrell, uh, in the alt art that, that you got in the uh, latest, I think it was the store championship uh, pack that he came out of. But Sirio, and this is a great card for him to play here in defense. Because you have a stealth character that just came out, and now you have a stealth character on your side that can give somebody else on your side of the board stealth as well. You've effectively shut down Asher's effectiveness by making sure that these things will not be uh, unopposed. If she is uh, participating as an attacker in an unopposed challenge and wins, she gets to stand back up. Which means you can chip away at a few uh, challenges get some power, kill a few characters, and then you still have a strength for military and power holding icon uh, character just ready to go with it. She's especially nasty if you can manage to get a, an intrigue icon on her. Mm -hmm. Which now, thanks to, I think, small... Uh, I can't remember the name of the card. It's like Tithe, but it makes you a member of the small council... And gives you an intrigue icon. It has to be played on a unique character, so you can't give like a Lord's Ports Fisherman uh, access to the small council. They just won't have that. Okay. Renly will be like, and just be just walk out of there, start his own nation, and then get killed by a by a shadow monster. That's what actually happened in the book. Oh my. Yes. One thing. That kind of hurts with Greyjoy's playstyle. Again, you always want to go first. But whenever you're going first and staring into the maw of a pretty much unassailable gate, mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot you can do about that. No, there's really not. Uh, and it's really unfortunate because once you, once you look at that, you have to go defensive. And if you're not geared for any kind of defense or even counter, then it's just downhill. Um, you just can't. I still think he's going to poke here. Because he has to, and also, he has one card in hand that will mitigate the effect of one challenge that's going to happen in this turn. can hope for is a misplay and he's going with her and he's going with the power challenge i believe stealthing did he go for the military challenge i think he went military we're going to find out in a second depending on how he blocks this if i see a sand snake and serial pharrell sit down for a second i know exactly what happened There's always that chance that the, the player forgets that Sirio does what he does. Mm -hmm. Which gives anybody on your side of the board a military. And Brady's good about giving you that. Okay, he's, he's, he's messing with Sirio for a little bit. So we know Sirio is probably going to be knelt here, so this was a military challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brady's pretty good about giving you that action window. And boom, there it goes. 
again, because green blood is out and because Eddie has a summer card they're strong. and Brady has a summer card, that's plus two apiece. They're, they're so strong. <laughs> I believe this is going to be intrigue for four. If you have little finger, use him. That's, oh, yeah. uh, that's a good one there. Uh, folks, do not worry about the bastard daughter. She's just tanning. And that was an intrigue. And he pulls another green blood out of his hand. Now, there's a moment coming up in a little bit where this pull would have been tremendously, tremendously devastating for Eddie. And we'll get to that hopefully in a little bit. Challenges have been passed, and Eddie is now contemplating. Military take over for four, five, six. I would almost say here and block for three um, the win so there's no power given on and oh Asha is baptized she now has plus one strength and a cute little attachment that you just can't you just gotta love that stuff oh yeah um, I like to call I like to think of that as an anti-Targaryen card because she gets Dracarist and so she'd die but then Risen from the Sea gives her that, at least that plus one strength so she's not dead and then by the end of that challenges phase, she's back up to not just four, but five. Oh, yeah. um, power challenge went off here with Marcella. Another power from Renown. Uh, you also notice that you got Renown on uh, the Knights of the Sun because we're past three used, well, we're at three or more used pl uh, plot cards. So Knights of the Sun have Renown now. Marcella has Renown, so that's another one there. So we are standing at five, six, seven, eight to one. Dirty. Absolutely dirty. Right. And we're about to hit round five. And I always love this one because I know exactly which one they're both going to play. <laughs> Not just because I've I've watched this game already, uh, but because I know exactly what you should do here. Boom. Calm over Westeros, both sides. Um, each of them are going to pick, I believe in this regard, I think Brady chose power to reduce the claim over on Eddie's side. So his power claim is at zero. Mm -hmm. Eddie, I believe, chose military to release, to re reduce his military claim by one to zero. Fun card. And again, it's a summer plot. Ultimately, again, Eddie's going to be the one who gets the better of this because he has green blood out and he has got two characters that are now, instead of sitting at four and three, are sitting at six and five. And it's a reason why the math here just doesn't work in it Bra in Brady's favor at all. And also, Balin effectively gets neutered by this, because for Balin to work, you want to make sure that the other side is either at a lower strength or that you are at a higher strength. And normally, Balin swings, and there's nothing Knights of the Sun can do because five versus four, Balin. Reduces uh, considers all strength lower than his to be zero, making unopposed challenges completely the thing he's going to be doing all the time. Mm -mm, can't do it. Those Knights of the Sun can now block him solo and win. Yeah. I see you, Balan. Come on out, big boy. You yeah. waited long enough. Unfortunately, Brady, Brady's not really running the pump version where he has all the bon the bonuses for going first mm -hmm. boom beat stick balan welcome sir also if you'll notice there i uh, pointed at little finger he had forgotten to take the gold for little finger mm -hmm. uh, as a sign of uh, great sportsmanship eddie was like now go ahead and get your gold man uh, very appreciative of that love that kind of uh, play most friends especially with how serious this gets 
All right, this is a very thought intensive game. Mm-hmm. Especially between these two, and especially with the decks they're playing right now. Right. It's a pretty tense moment for these two. So once again, the math's in play here. You have icon math. Right now, I think, militarily, Eddie is on top here, not just because of just having more military strength, but having Serio, which can throw another military pretty much on every character he has. Um, be really strange to see Marcella Baratheon with a sword charging at Balan Greyjoy, but sure, why not? I'm okay with that. Uh, Intrigue-wise, uniquely, I have to say, because Littlefinger is out there, and because of how power is almost across the board on Brady's side, I think you have they have the way of getting that Intrigue kind of snuck in there. Um, as far as pure stats go, Eddie should have it, but I think in this round, thanks to a power challenge, I think he sneaks an Intrigue challenge in here. Eddie's just completely deep in thought on this one. Brady checking to see if, he, see if he has a plot deck. He does. That's good. He'd have a plot deck in order to play the game. Checking to see if he has a dead pile. He most certainly does. Check his hand again. Absolutely. Good job. Eddie, yes, you have a hand, sir. That's your discard pile. Mm hmm. Okay. And oh, here we go, finally. Gross. Ariane. Darlin, hate that you left. Glad that you're back. Oh, yeah. Flexibility like a yoga instructor. That's what Ariane Martel gives you. Mm -hmm. You can defend and then defend again by pulling her back to hand and throwing something else out there. You can attack and then attack again by throwing something else in your hand out there. And then you can do a mixture of both. If you're going second, you can defend and then take her back and something else comes into play and then there's your favorite play with her for martel absolute era hota mm -hmm. area hota has ambush five he normally costs three uh, when he comes into play during a challenge he gets to pick a character and remove them from the challenge he does not have to be ambushed just so long as he comes into play during the challenge which means using Ariane is one way to get him involved in that. My all-time favorite with her is defending with knights or with the Night Watch, putting in Benjamin Stark and sacrificing him for a and using quick him two. for the claim. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, gross. I love it. I've won too many games off of that. Yep, that's neutered a little bit now. Now that nightmares, um, which is an event that effectively does the same thing as uh, as. Um, Milk. Milk of the poppy. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you do do that, if they're savvy and they help, they're holding one. They'll use it then. And okay, now you have to choose something else other than Benjen to die. You st well, you'll have Benjen more than mm -hmm. likely, unless you are forced to only kill Benjen in that point. In which point, you've had a terrible, terrible time. Most likely, I'd ha I'd be able to save Benjen as well. But most of the time, you don't want to. But in that case, absolutely. Yeah. But that's why a neutral reaction is always good. Mm -hmm. I think Lannisters still have the best reaction cards, like events. Treachery being there is certainly one. Hear me roar to be able to put anything in your hand out. It's going to go to the discard pile mm -hmm. eventually, but a mountain out of nowhere can cause an entire wipe of a board if played correctly. Absolutely. Brady 
he's kind of got in his head about how he wants to kind of peace with this. Because Greyjoy is aggressive, the, the natural inclination is to attack. And I do th believe attacking here is the thing you want to do, but you kind of want to make sure you're attacking for the right reasons. Right. Man, that is a wall he's looking at. Mm-hmm. I guess, I guess the best thing to do is just poke and hope for a mistake, and that's about it. Yep. Um, that's almost literally every game. Yep. With an aggressive deck, you want to force them into making errors. Like mm -hmm. you're already, you already want to be. I want to say necessary up tempo, but you always want to be pushing the issue. Looks like Brady's keeping tempo there. Yep. <laughs> He's playing chopsticks. I've uh, I've been given I've been given a lot of guff to both of them, but I, I want to take this opportunity to at least say this, especially over the last half year, uh, sitting down across the table from these two is always a challenge, because, and we'll hold that thought for a second as boom here we go, military for ten, uh, we're gonna stealth the Knights of the Sun. I believe military for 10. He may have gone power. But I think he wanted to kind of sew up the field. Let's see what happens. Okay, this will be a power, and he blocked for 4. Or actually, no, 5, 6. Once again, yeah. green blood. Oh, my God. I love you. Yeah, it makes her viable against Balin. Mm-hmm. Well, here's what this does here. Because that check isn't unopposed, the... Going entry? Oh, and I forgot. Once again, I forgot my card. He actually lost that power challenge because guess who also was participating? Marcella Baratheon. Mm. It's, very, it's very easy to forget these things sometimes. And honestly... He should have had one more power there, and we only just now caught this now. This game actually probably should have been over around here. So much so that we're going to take an intermission right here uh, because I believe someone's going to get a phone call here, and we're going to have to step up anyway. Oh, there we go. Okay, so, hey, everybody. Welcome to Gorilla Intermission, where uh, the Never Ready Gamer is going to show you some uh, some of the fun stuff that we've got around. Uh, we're currently in the back room of our uh, buddy Sim's house, and we're going around. There's Logan. Hi. And here's not Logan, uh, otherwise known <laughs> as the Investigators of Arkham Horror. Uh, it's a fun little short story compendium that Fantasy Flight Games put out about the Investigators from their Arkham Horror series of games. I highly recommend it. Uh, I am an English major, so that means I'm useless. But I highly recommend it, nonetheless. Uh, moving on, we're going to go shift a little bit over to here. we got Rum and Bones Second Tide. We definitely want to try a Let's Play of this. Uh, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. And we're just going to continue on this way. There's Charmander. And uh, check this out. Boom. Uh, Squirtle's always better. There you go. And then we go through here. What What are you pointing at? Nah. Okay. Okay. Everybody just act, act natural. Just act natural. He can see us. It's, well, he is blind, but I mean, you know, just act natural. Look at those ears. Okay, they, well, they're elfish. That means he can hear us. It's not. It's not like the. It's not like the. The thing from that show, that I can't remember right now. For legal purposes. Kill him. Don't kill me. Okay. Anyway, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Enough of that ribaldry. All right, and uh. Yeah, so the next thing we're looking to do uh, is gonna, we're going to do an unboxing of the latest Kickstarter from Arcadia Quest. And there's a lot of boxes. And that looks like a dragon. That looks like a molten steam golem. And, well, that box pretty much says exactly what it is. I, I, I like this idea. What do you think? I'm down. I, you, I thought you were up. Well, I mean, I'm the down one. You're the up one. It looks like we're going to the hell of the box, so I'm down. Okay, there you go. 
Alrighty. Well, anyway, thank you for this little intermission, folks, and uh, we're heading back to the game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And we are in Medias Res with the challenges phase. Brady has just passed his challenges after a disastrous power and intrigue combo, which did not go in his favor. We're going to see what greatness Eddie Camper can arrange in this situation. Well, it's nice to see that Brady at least has power on the field. And all of it knelt. Oh, no, I was actually talking about a score. Oh, that's, that's terrible. I was trying to earlier uh, give a little uh, dap to uh, both of my friends here. Yes, I used the word dap. Sue me. Um, but sitting across from these two is a joy in a general sense and a nightmare in the practical sense in that both of them are very well thought out, uh, particularly Eddie over the last half of a year uh, as he's developed more into a uh, card gamer from this. Looks like that, I believe, yeah, uh, renown and power. So that's going to be one, two, three power there. Uh, putting him at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. He's doing work and getting there. Yep. Uh, rattle shirts came down from that. This is going to be a military challenge, uh, and I believe he's going to go ahead and stealth uh, the rattle shirts on the other side of the board uh, with Sirio. And from this, I think it will go unopposed, if I remember correctly. I may not. I did. It was unopposed. Uh, because it was a military challenge, which Rattle Shirts participated as an attacker, that attachment from Risen of the Sea comes off, mm. uh, taking Asha back down to four, and something's going to die. I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't Littlefinger, it ain't Balin, it might be Asha, but no, it's it's going to be nobody, because this was the calm over Westro's turn, and he told military on that one. Yep. I thought he had done power, and not he did military. I switched that up in the earlier uh, VO. Uh, or in the the, uh, the early voiceover in that it was power chosen by <sighs> excuse me it was power chosen by uh, uh, Brady and it was military chosen by uh, by Eddie and we are now standing at fourteen to nothing although it should be fifteen right now because Marcella was in two challenges in which she won and had renown so she should have a fourth power on her ending this game right here however none of us caught that and there's four people who play this game who didn't renown is that's a that's a must isn't it it's not a must it's a may okay um so that's just misplay on it him. was a miss it was a misplay and but it was a misplay on all four of us because none of us noticed that and we should have well you and i have no business interfering with their game that is entirely true but in the moment i didn't notice that, that so that to me, I feel bad for right now for not noticing that. More mm -hmm. so from a long the long matter. Certain things are going to happen here mm -hmm. that would have drastically been changed if the game had just ended here. Oh, yeah. And we'll go into that uh, in a moment as this will be the final turn of the game. Spoiler alert. Brady comes out with Rise of the Kraken. Two gold, eight initiative, two claim. Uh, if he wins an uh, unopposed challenge, he gets two power in addition to the victory point for uh, for getting an unopposed challenge. Very, very scary. On the flip of that, uh, you have Eddie, who has played a noble cause, 501. And again, the first Lord or Lady he plays this turn is going to be at a $2 discount. What is important about this is that because neither uh, have played a summer plot, there are no summer plots in play, meaning the green blood for the first time since it's been out there means nothing. That's the third. Uh, the third uh, orange grove came down real quick over on the marshalling side of things. Uh, Brady went with a priest of the drowned god and has, I believe, passed marshalling. You're going to have a lot of tick over here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Still just, waiting. Just put Arian out, man. Just put Arian Martell out. <laughs> just do it. 
And it's not because I know you did it. It's because I know you're going to do it. If I was standing in Brady's place, one, I'd be like, why am I standing? There's a chair. Two, I know you got her in hand. Three, four, five. Hello, Ariane. There he commits. Um, she spent so much time in Eddie's hand, she's now become nuclear reactive. Um, that is why the glow and not because of our terrible lighting. Again, we will fix that in the future, folks. Thank you very much for your patience. And Eddie is getting ready for what should be a bad turn for him. Because none of his strength is up. So Balan now has a field day and can do a lot of military just wackadoo. And that is a, that is a technical term. Is it? Military wackadoo. Mm. Look it up. I'm pretty sure that was... Uh... A patent maneuver, right? No? I shook my head. Yeah. Well, I could see it. They can't, but I can. Yeah. Much like Illidan. Illidan Storm Rage. Yes. Call back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Challenges phase is up for Brady. It's going to be an interesting one, I hope. It will be. I'll tell you that right now. And just deep in thought at this point. Extremely deep in thought. Like, I was so mesmerized, I actually paused waiting for when he actually did react. <laughs> Do a quick math check. Math check, car check, heart check, 120 beats per minute, we're good. We're in the fat burn zone. Oh man, the body language here is... One of pensiveness. Well, Eddie's, Eddie's just calm. He... he... He Eddie, he has this. Eddie, Eddie is very good at kind of sitting back. I honestly, I don't think it's because he thinks he has this. I think it's because he knows what can happen mm -hmm. and is just waiting for it. The opening here is going to be an intrigue challenge, and I like the call. And the reason why I like the call is because he's got cards in hand. There are certain cards Martell plays that could ruin a day for anything that Brady wants to do here. Once again, good sportsmanship. He did not get his extra gold from having little finger, so uh, he was allowed to pull that. Thank you very much, Eddie. We appreciate that. But you've got you've got seven intrigue coming at you. I think you have Ariane and you have Marcella at seven. If he if he kneeled them both, he thought about it, didn't do it. He considered it, didn't do it. Marcel is doing work with that three power mm -hmm. on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eddie's power gain wasn't even just gradual. It kind of hit hit really hard, really fast. So he does go for the block with Marcella. Uh, so no unopposed right there. It is to claim. So he pulls both cards out of his hand, wanting them being put to the sword. Any kind of swing back on military is not going to mean anything, or it's not going to mean as much as it would have. Let me put it like that, because even if he goes over five, he's not going to be able to select kill anything. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest mistake of the night is about to happen. Balan and Asher are going in. Knights of the Sun have been stealthed. There is nothing with more power on the board. This goes unopposed. Or rather, more strength and Balan. Brady elects to take the two claim for the kill rather than trigger Sea Stone Chair. Which means no power came off the board in the form of Marcella or the Knights of the Sun dying. He's still at 14. So instead, he's going to kill two, which I think is going to be Bastard Daughter and I believe the Rattle Shirts 
is also going to be killed as well. But the main thing there is that three power that could have gone off the board and dropped him back down to 12, which is certainly cl still close to the hip, but entirely manageable. And I said 12 and I meant to say 11 because my math isn't good. We even have a we do not sow on the green blood, which means if this got out of this turn, the strength boosting is no longer there. We're going to see a card pulled for Bastard Daughter. And I believe it's another copy of Vicky Greyjoy. I found out after the match he had his third copy of Victorian Greyjoy also in his hand. So the next turn he would have also been coming out swinging with that as well. But what killed him here is that without using the Seastone Chair, Marcella stays alive. That power stays on the board. And even after this upcoming power challenge, which I think comes from Asha, and I think... Who got stealth here? I want to say the Knights of the Sun got stealth here, but it might have been. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't Ariane because, uh, thanks to uh, Sirio, Sirio gave her a military and a stealth, and so she would be able to block this because she can't be bypassed. So, I think you're going to see a power challenge here from Asha. Uh, she's going to stealth the Knights of the Sun. I think Ariane is going to kneel in defense shortly hereafter. To make sure that this isn't an unopposed challenge. Tick, 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 tick. Bong. Power challenge. Stealthing there. Block with Ariane. Or does he? Block with Ariane. Yeah, it's not unopposed, but it's still a victory. Two power is going to go off of Eddie's card. Two power is going to go on to Brady's card. Uh, again, what was a 14-0 to zero game has now become a 12-2, 2, 3, 4, 5 game. Right now, excuse me, 6 game because of the power that's on Balin. Mm -hmm. But the problem is Brady's out of challenges, and Eddie has all three of his left. Right. Now, with no cards in hand, Ariane is not an issue because there are no cards to put out from his hand, but he has two people left. He only needs two challenges. He's going to he's going to stealth um, uh, Rattleshirts, and Rattleshirts is going to die to claim because it was unopposed. That's another power. So he is now back at 13. Power, unopposed, is going to be 14, and with the renown from... Oh, 14 and 15, and just to make sure, with Renown, it would put a 16th one on Knights of the Sun. Ball game. Yep, that's the game. Eddie Camper wins. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, shake hands, and let's go to the afterplay. You're tired because you had to face me twice before facing him, so you've done three of these today. Yeah. That was your first one, and you look disheveled to all hell. So, uh, so I want to start. Let's start with the winner, uh, Mr. Eddie Camper Jr. Right. Um, what did you think of that match? Uh, did you feel you had it in pocket the whole time? Were you yeah. worried or like what was going on? I felt a lot more comfortable after he um, misplayed. I'll say his Valor Magulis. I felt like once that got out the win, I didn't have to worry about it no more. Um, I felt a little bit comfortable with my, uh, with my. Uh, I mean, board state was a little messed up, but I felt like I could rebound from. Uh, I think I was at that point. I was up by about seven to zero, maybe seven to one. So I just felt a little. After that, I felt a lot more confident, like I controlled the game, and uh, I just wanted to keep the status quo. Was what I focused on yeah. after that. I like it, uh, Brady. Um, that was mis big mistake number one. Uh, yeah. I don't think the Valor play was a bad one because. He had a lot on board, and you're able to wipe that and keep stuff on board. Where I think you went wrong in that turn was throwing Vicky in on that challenge. Vicky being Victorian Greyjoy, throwing Vicky in on that challenge when Gaston Grey was up. Yeah, it was a brain fart. I saw him marshal it, made a mental note of it, and got kind of ahead of myself on my Valor turn. And, uh, and threw him in and then forgot about that. Otherwise, I could have definitely maintained card advantage 
uh, into the next round, and that's what mm -hmm. that's what kind of put me on the back foot the whole time. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Uh, the second part, um, why why did Marcella Baratheon survive the Sea Stone Chair? Because yeah. I didn't do math in my head before doing that. That mm -hmm. was. Yeah, that was and definitely the, uh, the Pete Carroll throwing it on the one yard line moment of that game. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. I, I'll say, um, just a mental note. There's a lot of math that goes on in this game. Strength icons. Never forget your power math, especially when it's that close to the hair. Uh, that was that was brutal. That was brutal. But now, once again, as one of my old adages, the two things you're always going to remember are the games you should have lost. Somebody did something stupid and came back to win. But especially the ones that you should have won, which we don't necessarily know that, but we definitely know that the whole pace would have changed there. I think that's something you're going to remember and look out to next time. Would you agree, sir? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Now, I notice you've pull, pulled out some cards. These some MVP cards for they, the game? They are my MVP cards of the deck, and I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with them all. Serial Pharrell. Serial Pharrell, and that's three strength, military, has stealth and can give military and stealth to any card on the board, which I think is a pretty good thing for you. Yeah, um, I think that the reason that these three cards helped me the most this game, they, I didn't pick them. They're not like MVP overall, but I think MVP of this game because uh, in a deck, him running Greyjoy, Kings of Summer, number one, uh, the green blood gives me plus one strength for any Summer plot card reveal. So if I'm running one, which I run Kings of Summer, so of course I'm going to have, I have five out of seven plots that are Summer. Plus him, he's giving me two strength every time he plays a summer plot card. And uh, Serial Pharrell, just, you know, with his stealth and giving stealth to somebody else. Which, in this case, it's counter stealth for all the stealth that you're going to see exactly. on the blue side. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's why I also picked Marcella Brathen, because not only is she renowned, but with her not kneeling as a defender, that helps out a lot. On power challenges. On power right. Yeah, on power challenges, if she is standing and, she's, and you need her to defend... She does not sit down. So going second, mm -hmm. uh, it actually kind of, to me, it goes, uh, yeah, no, actually it goes in, in great with what you want to be doing with them anyway. This was unique in that you're playing the deck that always wants to go first, and, and you're playing, playing the deck that always wants to go second, so there's never really an issue there as far as, like, the timing of it when you, when you want to do that. I think that was that was kind of an interesting thing. There. I didn't so see I him like draw that. enough of his cards that would help him with going first, yeah. but um, I feel like, in my opinion, and I could be totally wrong, this is just my opinion, I feel like Greyjoy's ability to go first with the right cards out is better than Martell's ability to go second. And what I mean by that is, like, with the, I don't remember what your locations are called, they give you plus two strengths for each. One yeah, I don't even think I know I have those in this deck. Got you, but I mean, for stuff like that, like, I mean, if I'd have seen any of those hit the board, I'd have had to go first, man, and take my chances, because it's just hard to, it's just hard to uphill fight a plus two strength Daemon, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So that's uh, Bray, what are your thoughts on it? It's kind of what he just kind of put out about the fact that there are sometimes he's going to want to go first to kind of throw off your throw off your tempo and rhythm. Playing, uh, I think playing Mar Martell like the going having to going second all the time and and wanting to be second and and at least lose some is is kind of a hard way to play. Um, you have to walk that regular's edge to not let them get so far ahead that you can't come back uh, so yeah um, when you just count them on the strength of Greyjoy likes to go first and Martell likes to go second I think the Greyjoy has more ways to exploit that than Martell has to wait there has ways to exploit their thing I agree so yeah has that gap shrunk since the game started. I think it has. Martell is just so much better than they were when, when they first came out. Like they're actually something that you have to worry about. And they're actually something that I hate playing again. Because mm -hmm. my thought and I don't think it's in your deck. Um, well the bone way, I don't think the bone way is in your deck. Um or is it or is it I have, one of I, I almost exclusively run Martell in different forms and fashions. I try it out every way you can run it. And um Current form, this one you played. No, well, I was getting to that. This okay. current form of the Martell that I'm running right now is about 80% board control. So um, it's, it's, it, it really doesn't rely too much on me losing. I don't, I don't even run any Viper's Eyes. The only thing that really helps me when I lose is the Bastard Daughter. That's about the only card. And uh, other than that, I've gutted everything that will help you. The Boneway's not in there. Viper's Eyes not in there. 
Vengeance for Ellie is not in there, which there are versions of that where I run it, and those are important cards. But for this particular deck, if you look through it, almost every one of my cards, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, no, not every one of them because of Marcella, but almost, I think out of my 13 characters, 11 or 12 of them have military icons. And that's what the focus of this deck is. It's a, I call it my uh, Martel War Machine deck. And uh, when I publish the deck list, you'll see why. It focuses very, very heavily on, you know, with Nightmare. So that way, when Ellie is on board, um, she's even a military if I take it, if I so choose to go that route. But yeah, the focus, the, the theme of my deck, and I'll give you the deck list when we um, when we get that printed up. But the theme of this deck on any given day is to um, control the board state. Uh, two things before we head out. Uh, one, I'd also throw in Gas and Gray in there. Hey, Easily yeah, for the right, clutch, right, right. even for the uh, for the clutch play the way it happened there, but just having that out there, at least puts that machine that's always in drive on this side into neutral because it's like okay, I got to right. parse out which one. Like I've got to force him to make the make the choice of when he wants to gas him. Um, is my thought there. Uh, second thing, this is the third game uh, you've played today, and I haven't seen Nymeria on your side of the board once. Not once. I run three of her. I promise I do. I run three of her. I just haven't been drawn today. <laughs> I think in the games I played earlier, for some reason I had her, but I didn't get her out for whatever reason. But you had a thousand, whatever. We're not talking about that game. Yeah, that, that game happened in the far, far distance. Well, past. yeah, man. I run three of her. I just uh, had yeah. bad luck with her. You also haven't seen um, but one time today the um, Red Viper. So it's just been a bad draw day. I run three milks. I never saw them. Right. I, I run know. three iron mines, only saw one of them. I run three ashes, only saw one of them. I run three Melisandres, and I always see all of them. <laughs> right. that, that is where we're going to leave this. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for Eddie Camper, and for Brady Davis, and for our engineer, Mr. Jason Sims, my advice to anybody playing against Martell is to um, I honestly believe that Martell's locations are better than their characters. Thank you, Location and good night. Passing. All right, we're done. Editing's done. It's 3 o'clock, Jay. Do you want to watch playback? Jay. Jay. Playback. You want to watch playback? Where are your pants? When, when did you take your pants off? <sighs> hey, guys. Logan with Never Ready Gamers here. I just want to take time to thank you for watching our video. Also, I want to take time to thank our sponsors, at Macnarb Gaming. You can check them out at macnarbgaming.com. Links will be down below. And if you're in town, you can check them out in Gautier, Mississippi as well. Jay, why, why do you still not pants? What are you doing? I don't know what's happening. They're fighting. No, no. They're fighting. You're going to bed. Come on. Guys. They're fighting. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out our Patreon down below. Have a good night. Jay, say good night. They're fighting. Good night, guys. They're fighting. No, get your ass back to bed.